Gabbard? Yeah. Well, <laughs> she's, 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 she, she's a rhino. No, well, I mean, she, they should bring her in because she's less of a rhino than most of the rhinos. Yeah. <laughs> rhinos don't want her. Yeah, right. <laughs> The following is an America Matters Media production. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the station or its advertisers, although we think they should. But that's the opinion of America Matters Media. This is not Welcome to Talking Truth to Power, the matter in America and the world, Freedom Park Radio. Around the world. Around the world. I'm Brendan Trainer, And here on 93.7 now on the FM side 93 point, We're FM now in, in Northern Nevada. Yeah, very exciting. Very exciting. And I'm Brendan Trainer, your host, Leland Fagri, our intrepid co-host. <laughs> intrepid, yeah. <laughs> I'll accept that. <laughs> and uh, working on the board is Shannon Lawson. Good and, morning. Good morning. And... Uh, Boy, uh, Shanimal, uh, before we get started, saw an, another lovely display of horses this morning on the southern end of Washoe. Oh, awesome. Oh, I was there last week, and I seen like over 100. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of them. I think the grass is coming up now, the perennial. Yeah. And we call this the gathering because uh -huh. they trade mares. They fight for mares. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So this is the gathering. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. And you know what us else today is? Uh, let's see. It's April twentieth. Yeah. It's, what does that mean? It's four twenty day. <laughs> <laughs> Shalom, where's the laughter? <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, uh, uh, you know, the the weed is legal now in Nevada, and and what twenty recreational, recreational. Yeah. yeah. And in uh, you know, I guess around twenty other states. I haven't kept up lately. Mm -hmm. But, I think it's uh, a few more than that now. Yeah, the Democrats <laughs> passed a bill to make it federally decriminalized, so we'll see. That uh, shouldn't be at the federal level, but yeah, we'll take it. Yeah, know, that uh, gets us beyond this, you know. So well, we it's can... interstate commerce. That's what they right. So mm -hmm. they should have a say if they're going to make it for everybody. Uh, but they should also leave it for those uh, counties that want to remain dry, like they did after Prohibition, that they could do so. But, uh, there were dry counties after Prohibition? Yeah, there were. <laughs> after the repeal of Prohibition, that's right. I went through one of them in uh, Oklahoma. Yes, that's, in the late 70s. that's where a lot of them were. In the you Midwest. know what they did? They had, to, they had to store bottles of liquor on the premises. Uh huh. And then you could come in and claim your bottle. Oh. I actually went in one. That's how they did it. They kept a bottle in the, in the storage cupboard with your name on it, and then they brought it out to you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that was a, the, the Oklahoma version of a bar. In Utah, they got around it. Uh, it's no longer in effect this way. It's uh, but it, in Utah, I was it ha I was there when it was in effect, and you had to pay five bucks to join the private club inside a yeah, restaurant. And, yes, it definitely. And then was. as a private club, you, they could serve you alcohol. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Membership. Membership. Yep. Mm -hmm. There are always ways around prohibition. I understand that doesn't exist in Oklahoma now, though. We've, we've you know, they've gone, they've gone wet. Yeah. So, <laughs> there is a prohibition party that gets on the ballot in some of these states. But it's about a different substance these days, right? No, it's about all <laughs> okay. everything. They don't, they don't want anything. <laughs> no sex except in the missionary position. I see. You know? <laughs> How's that going for them? <laughs> <laughs> They're losing members. Huh. Now. <laughs> well, speaking of losing members, how yeah. about the Democratic Party? How about they, that, huh? They are, they are shedding members like fleas of a dog, you know? Well, they expect to lose in November. They deserve to lose in November. Yes. So, they brought it on themselves. They did. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they, a, uh, there is a, a story here on uh, that uh, Politico has predicted, of all th sources, that the Republicans will win both the House and Senate. Uh, in November. And that's a source you wouldn't expect to divulge, now, at least main, not this early. Well, yeah. they have a super majority in the Senate. That's what they have to talk about now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they could 
possibly pass a constitutional amendment or or do other things or two or two <laughs> or impeach the president yeah well i think the articles of impeachment will be waiting for him so. yes i i know there's several of them probably mm -hmm. it's uh, it's under their breath at the moment but i think that as we go forward because we're six months from the election now yes it will become more and more focused i think yes even oh, sure. among the likes of uh mcconnell for example <laughs> <laughs> i think he's already well aware because that that wing has got to go <laughs> he often passes by the uh uh schumer seat and you know kind of gives it a rub and I'm, I'm, we're waiting for you mitch yeah. it's the decorum that uh, uh, that we don't deserve to, to witness anymore that may have been purposeful and served a, a legitimate purpose at one point in time in our history but all of that collegial stuff in the senate you mean anywhere now at the at the in the seats of government it's uh -huh. over yeah. we're not going to like each other anymore let's just get on with the you know with this. we're going to be like in the antebellum days yeah yeah that's right uh, getting a horse whipped on the floor of the senate or on the border <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah they finally exonerated they, them yeah. they finally ended the investigation on that's the right. uh border patrol agents that were accused of whipping the poor immigrants uh coming uh, over the border when we, and we all witnessed that they didn't in fact no they whip. just waved the no. reins around to reins around to protect the horse keep them away from the horse but they got it in in uh what's his name's ear by brendan brandon <laughs> <laughs> and so he repeated it and that's all he knows how to do is to repeat what he's told yep that's exactly right oh the donuts have arrived mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> we don't know. Well, the Easter Bunny will tell him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he got <laughs> some authority uh, from him, didn't he? Yeah. Or her, or whatever it is. I guess it's actually one of the female staffers, right? Probably. Yeah. I, no, think I don't know if anybody knows for sure. I think they do know who it is. But, okay. Um, they didn't tell us the name, but. Uh, wasn't Jake Sullivan? I it was not Jake Sullivan. I don't you, know the, you know the thing. <laughs> Well, I know. Will this long uh, nightmare finally be over in a couple of years? I don't know. Yeah, but, not, I, you I, know, he's calling a Russian uh, operation in Ukraine as a genocide when all the evidence points to the genocide being perpetrated by the Ukrainian government, not the Russians. The he, just, he just repeats what he says. That's all. Mm -hmm. What he's told. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't know how did we how did the democrats ever elect this guy to fraud <laughs> well that was one way they did it yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. they had south carolina going for <laughs> <laughs>
you know, victories or territories, kind of like a hockey stick. And it's from the blade of the hockey stick down to the shaft. They're filling in. They're filling in that area, and uh, they're doing it methodically and sl- and not like a blitzkrieg, but pretty pretty swiftly for an army. They're they're covering kilometers per day, but there is no real rush. No matter what the commentators tell you, that Putin needs the victory as soon as possible because the Russian people the Russian people are behind Putin. No doubt, his approval the rating has su- only gone up. The polling suggests that. I, yeah. I don't know how honest the polling is, as, as it, you might expect. It might not be as honest as as it, is, uh, as it is even here, because we don't have good, honest polling either. But no. But, but nevertheless, uh, it does seem to favor strong Russian support for the uh, special military operation, and uh, so it's. Um, the Ukrainians have launched numerous counterattacks, but with very little success. I think they maybe took back one town among many towns, and and that'll be you know that won't last long. Uh, so what they're what Russia is doing with this kind of attack, it's causing the Ukrainian army to launch attacks that have a low odds of success and cause heavy losses. So. These, even these counterattacks are working against the Ukraine. Uh, they, Kiev uh, re- released ridiculous figures of 2,500 Ukrainians killed in action, and Russia replies it's more like 25,000. If the Russian figure of 250,000 combined uh, Ukraine armed forces in, in, is true, that would mean a 10% casualty rate, which is extremely high. I think they just left out a zero. Isn't that what it was? What? the uh, In the numbers. Yeah, they, they left out the zero. Yeah. Out. yeah, it was a clerical error. Clerical error. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then Zelensky this week uh, released a very strange video. Did you see it? I did not. Yeah, he. I heard of it, but I his eyes were glazed over, and the camera was panning around, kind of wobbly, crazily. Mm -hmm. So uh, he appeared very drunk or stoned, and we know. Well, which is it? We don't know for sure. Okay. Without a blood test, but uh, we get our intrepid uh, intelligence on the ground there (laughs) and figure it out. Because I kind of want to know that answer to that question. Yeah. (laughs) The cokehead of Kiev. That's what people in Ukraine call him. Uh, so, what is happening in Mariupol, in the uh, Mariupol uh, city of Mariupol, the final wipe up there? Of the, uh, there's probably now about two thousand remnants out of at least. Well, I've heard figures from eight thousand to fifteen thousand originally there. Uh, they're mostly in underground bunkers in the steel factory but there's uh some street fighting inside the complex of mariupol if you again i can only recommend uh youtube patrick lancaster he's an excellent journalist a video journalist that's on the ground there and he reports uh, virtually every day and some of the reporting is very graphic like the other day he released uh, a street in mariupol that had over a hundred dead bodies just lying there and uh he managed to get a, most of them are, you know, shot from pretty far away, but he he did get a close-up of one person's face and it was just a skull. It had been eaten off, mm-hmm. you know, completely. So, uh, that's, and what, that's, that's what we would describe as graphic. Yes, that is graphic. <laughs> so the, uh, the, and then he stops Ukrainians on the street and asks them what happened. So it's not like in the West where you get these people marched into a studio that have been prepped and everything to give their account. But the Ukrainians on the street, they say that it was the uh, Ukrainian forces that uh, are killing, shooting people and killing them to keep them in their homes so they'll be used as uh, human shields. And an Azov commander... Are released... they feeding them as well? <laughs> Who knows? Makes you wonder, Probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then an Azov commander issued a short video log yesterday but in which he claimed that there were ukrainian citizens hiding from the russians along with the azov troops and so russia has offered three times a surrender 
for the for the remnants that are hiding out there. And one of those deadlines came and went this morning. Yes, yes this morning. Mm -hmm. And they specifically asked them to send out the civilians. And now the Azov, when, another thing that Azov claims is that the Russians shoot the civilians uh, or shoot people that are trying to leave, but that's counterproductive. I mean, the Russians set up these humanitarian corridors just like they did in, in uh, Syria, not just to release the civilians, although that's very important, but also to allow deserters to leave. Because if a deserter leaves the army, he's no longer a combatant. Yeah, you don't want yeah. them there anyway. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, the uh, I would not believe the Azov commanders, uh, and especially when you listen to the people in, in the Donbass who explain what is really going on, and so uh, the fact is that it's the Azov people that are trying to keep the uh, ethnic Russians uh, from leaving and in order to use them as human shields. And they describe how they, you know, they put uh, uh, artillery, snipers, uh, tanks, if they have them, or armored vehicles inside or right under a, uh, a building like a hospital or, or uh, uh, kindergarten. And then, you know, every once in a while, they pop out and start shooting. And even under the laws of uh, a just war, the Russians can take those, take them out because they are combatants. And it's unfortunate, but they're putting the people that they're holding as human shields at risk. So, and we still don't know what's inside the factory. As we've covered already, there seems to be something very, very important in there because there have been numerous attempts to try to evacuate at least some of the people there with by a helicopter and one time by a rogue cargo ship. But we're not sure what it is. Uh, Russia claims that there's about 400 foreign fighters, whether they're high-ranking uh, members of NATO that shouldn't be there and would be embarrassing. Uh, we know Macron has been on the phone constantly trying to get them to allow Russia to evacuate them as VIP evac evac evacuees. And uh, I think it would be embarrassing for Macron to, to, uh, with his election coming up on Sunday uh -huh. against Marine Le Pen, who's uh -huh. been, he's close on his, he close on his heels. Surging. Surging, yes. It would be embarrassing to find out that they had French uh, officers in the uh, in the in the Ukraine fighting along with the uh, Brits. Yeah, <laughs> fighting <laughs> along with the Brits. Yeah, they wouldn't like that either. <laughs> <laughs> Historical rivals. Yes. You know, Putin has launched an ICBM this morning. Did he? Yep. Called the Sarmat, according to Interfax. It's a hypersonic, I yep. think. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. But it's uh, meant to obviously send a, a message that's, to the West. Yeah, that's land launched mm -hmm. from a, shi a silo. The uh, Kinzhal is launched from a, a plane usually or a boat. But the uh, Sam House, that's a big one. That would be a multi-kiloton, I'm he sure. He has congratulated the armed forces on the successful test launch, according to another translation. He said that the Sarmat will make the madmen who attempt to threaten Russia think. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously designed. Well, they to do are that. mad. Yeah, they're mad. You know, and if, um, I played that uh, well done song, uh, or I posted it on you on uh, Talking Truth to Power and, and other venues, Mama Russia, which is almost like America the Beautiful. It's not a almost. national anthem, but it's like a Russian. It's an anthem. Know, yeah, it's an anthem, mm -hmm. and. Uh, one of the lines is, those who hurt Russia will be hurt themselves. <laughs> uh, so uh, Spoken like the true nationalist. <laughs> <laughs> but not an ultra-nationalist. You, you know what the uh, ultra-nationalist is. You know, they want every country to have only one ethnicity. That's They're like what the neo, Eastern neoliberals. Europe, yeah. <laughs> That's what the uh, Eastern European ultra-nationalists that you find in, in the Ukraine now, they, that's what they believe. So they want to ethnically cleanse out the uh, all the uh, Russian ethnic, ethnic Russians. Uh, but, but, you know, they don't they don't go after the Jews. So Israel is yeah, they're, perfectly they're fine, fine for Jews to donate to them and support mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> They'll see to it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, 
there was also the Russians released a video of, in the Azov bunker of a, a apparently a satanic worship shrine. They had the uh, de- demonic goat head figure in the, inside a pentagram and goat head mass and all this stuff. And uh, we might hear more something about later. Satan and war. Is yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, as governor, I will not take any orders from Joe Biden. He's illegitimate. That election was a sham. That was Trump endorsed Arizona gubernatorial candidate Kerry Lee. Welcome back. It's Talking to the Power. I'm your host, Brendan Trainer. My co-host, Leland Fagley. And, uh, you know, speaking of uh, candidates coming up, um, you've heard of J.D. Vance? Yeah, he was not on Trump's train for a while, and yeah. apparently now he's all on board. <laughs> well, he came out against the war, and yeah. uh, so did uh, Trump, and, and Trump endorsed him. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's... no, it, it's come together, but it, it wasn't always that way. No. Yeah. He got a lot of attention on Fox, too, as a result of that. So. Right. And he's a friend of a Tucker Carlson show. He wrote a book called Hillbilly Elegy about uh, poor yes. whites right. and the culture of uh, poor whites and, and so on. Yeah. So uh, we do have to talk a little bit about something very sad and uh, very dangerous. And uh, I don't know if you've heard of him. I mentioned him here. But uh, there's a video uh, vlogger, Gustavo Liora, who hasn't been, he's uh, he's been posting videos out of Kharkov, Ukraine. And he's a truth teller, but he hasn't been heard from since Friday. And he's feared captured, tortured, and or killed by uh, Azov or goons associated with Azov and SBU, which is the Ukrainian Secret Service. Because he himself declared that if I turn up missing... Yes. If if you don't hear from me every 12 hours, you know I've been captured. Mm -hmm. Or dead. Yeah. His videos are still up there if you want to check them out. Uh, Gustavo Lira, also known as... uh, uh, What is it? Uh, Coach Red Pill. (laughs) <laughs> yeah it was his other moniker. That was a pretty, that's a pretty good description yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> but the thing is he was doxxed by the liberal website the daily beast say it isn't so <laughs> yes so the daily beast first smeared him and then they informed the Zelensky government that there was a pro-russian journalist vlogging in kharkov so that's really the state of the Democratic Party I right think the now. The Daily Beast is just an intelligence rag, isn't it? Probably. I think it's probably CIA. So much of it is. Yeah. So and, and uh, a known as a he's a Chilean, although he's educated in the U.S. and he might be a U.S. citizen. Yeah, we've I'm, talked about I'm him not on sure. the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. but a known as of terrorist who's ironically named Chile released a, a statement claiming that he captured Lira. But we don't know his fate. So people are urged to call the... Uh, that would be ironic, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be. <laughs> Chile yes. captured a Chilean journalist. Yes. <laughs> what about the odds? I, I know. So uh, Gustav- The longer I live, you know, it just seems like they all add up. Yes, yes. So I, I'm told one of the videos he has uh, shows how the Ukrainians use this particular area uh, to make propaganda videos. And he's a filmmaker himself, so he understands what they're doing. And he points out that every video has the same background and they have destroyed Ukrainian tanks that they claim to be Russian tanks. And uh, people... Because they have Zs on them? They don't have Zs. They don't have Zs. No, on them. no. Oh, okay. They're kind of in the background, but the <laughs> grills, the grills are standard for the Ukrainian type of tank, but not the Russian. But anyway... He, uh, they use Taylor, like like we said, Zelensky is surrounded by slick 
uh, media people. Oh yeah. yeah, very polished. So they they use slick images. Like one of the ones they use is they have a, a pretty Nazi girl. You know, I don't know her name, but she's kind of pretty cute. Nazis. Pretty Nazi girl. Yep. <laughs> She could have been marching in Berlin uh, 30 years ago, you know. Huh. But anyway, they uh, <laughs> with a Palestinian scarf. Now, why she wears a Palestinian scarf when Ukraine is, if anything, on the side of Israel, not Palestine. But she wears the Palestinian scarf to appeal to what uh, Lyra called the young Brooklyn libs. Uh, think about Vice magazine. You know, they hipsters that are really for the DNC and the mainstream mm -hmm. Democratic Party. Right. Yeah, and he's also put out a very good video describing the life and career of Victoria Nuland. And he... <laughs> <laughs> Cut me a slice of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he mentions that the animosity against Russia is stirred up by ethnicities that have a centuries-old hatred of Russia. You know, Colonel Douglas McGregor, I heard him give a speech, and he called them rootless cosmopolitans. Oh, that's a good description. Yeah. Was that recently? Uh, yeah, I, I just saw it recently. You yeah. know, you think he would turn up a little more than he does. I th he's been blackballed from Fox, Apparently except so. for five minutes on Tucker. Uh, you know, Tucker is where I see him, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I know that, um, what's his name, that Gowdy had him on on Sunday. And you know what? That's right. I did see him on that. Yeah. And uh, he because nobody's watching at that time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he had he was on Fox Business with Barney, and uh, he called uh, Zelensky as a, a NATO's puppet, and Barney didn't take to that. You mean he's not a hero? Yeah, the, the, he <laughs> he did he doesn't get the memos. <laughs> no. <laughs> So anyway, even if even if he's gone, I mean, it's worth checking out his his uh, video uh, vlogs. So uh, another target of the war right now is Dnipro, which is a city, a large city, the third largest Ukrainian city. It's just to the west of the Dnieper River, uh, and it's the power center of the oligarch Ihor Kolomoisky, who's the one who got Zelensky his position as president of Ukraine. Apart and, from his television program, you mean? Yeah, that's how he did it, with I his see. television program. <laughs> uh, it's like so, Ronald Reagan uh, all over again. Yes. In this, Ukraine. Yeah. But uh, he didn't even have Reagan's track record. I mean, he was just instantly picked up. His now, track record might have been better than Reagan's. I mean, he Reagan was a member of the ADA. Yeah. He had yeah. a far left background before he became president. You know, Zelensky... According to that film that came out, the Panama Papers, I think they said he had forty million dollars stashed away in a in Cyprus or a Mediterranean bank. But other people claim he's got over a billion waiting for him in a, a Panama bank. But he would uh, he has to live to collect it. And I think that's why he's getting it. stoned and making these frantic videos. Oh, I think they'll they'll send a team out to get him if it comes to that. Yeah, and I think it's more likely the Azov people that will kill him rather than the Russians. Probably. So, uh, like like we said, uh, the uh, he refused uh, several peace offers right before the war, and uh, nobody hears about that either, unless you unless you catch a a, a, cert, a few shows that are telling the truth. Well, at the time there was considerable understanding of those offers but they've since yeah, evaporated evaporated yeah so uh the uh the two brit there are now two british uh prisoners of war by the russians who are mercenaries or the russians claim to be mercenaries two that we know about two that we know about mm -hmm. and uh Volodymyr Zelensky has proposed to Russia to exchange the pro-Russian political detainee Viktor Medvedchuk for them. Uh, we don't know the status of those talks. So it's, you know, we're just not getting the news here. We're not having the, the truth being told to us. Nope. Every, you know, I, I listen. Nothing new about that. No. <laughs> I, it's I, a big I, club. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't in it. That's no. right. I mean, I heard ABC News said the Russians are advancing like a medieval army, raping and pillaging wherever they go. 
<laughs> and people hear this all the time. It's the brutal Russian invasion and the, uh, you know, never anything uh, bad about the uh, Ukrainians, or what they're doing, but well, it's what always... They, what, what is, they're repeating the same formulaic support uh -huh. that they gave to Hitler prior to the Second World War. <laughs> this <laughs> big, is big CNN. corporations, uh -huh. big media, they all supported Hitler at the time uh -huh. in the 30s leading up to the war. I mean, there's nothing unusual about that at all. Yeah, well, Hitler did a pretty good job in the early days with the economy, many, many people think. And he was Time Magazine's Man of the Year. Well, he, he, once or twice. Uh, Ford Motor Company bestowed a, yeah, Ford an Motor award on, over there. to him. You know, right. So, dog face pony soldier. So they, <laughs> yeah, so they liked him. Yeah, sure. The corporate uh, world didn't have any problem with Hitler whatsoever. No. Corporations like fascism. Yeah, they're, they're I suppose you could fashion. say that. Yeah, it's just less competition for them. Yeah, because the government fascism means the government can, doesn't really control the own the economy, but they more or less control it. And the left doesn't like to think of Hitler as a fascist. Oh, they never no. describe him as a fascist. No, they they don't. And they don't think it's socialism either. No, they they even though it's the National Socialist Party. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's how good our, our educational system is, that they can't even accurately describe socialism for the up-and-coming adults into our society. Right. Yeah. Shut up! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, well, that's how good it is. Yep. Divide and conquer, that's what they're doing. And the, uh, that's what the U.S. strategy is. We utilize all the tools in our toolbox. To destroy ourselves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so apparently Russia has a playbook, which we own. We have it. But the West has a toolbox that the Russians don't know anything ah, about. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> that explains it. <laughs> Speaking of Nazis in Eastern Europe, did you see the video of the uh, member of the uh, European Union Parliament uh, give the Nazi salute a couple of times I on did the not. floor? Yeah. Well, the risk of a market crash keeps growing. Okay. So we hope you enjoyed the ride through Fantasyland. Now watch your step as you exit. You know, I want to congratulate one of our sponsors, Porter Subs. Okay. They're in their 50th year, you know. Okay. Yeah, they, they sliced their sandwiches fresh. Yes. <laughs> and they were invented right here in Reno. Yeah. The uh, first store was on Rock. Sparks, Rock I think. Boulevard. Yeah, Sparks. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Good news. A Trump-appointed female judge. I uh -huh. can't, don't think, can't think of her name. I'm, I apologize. I saw the story, though. Yeah. yeah. Florida. <laughs> Yeah, in Florida, of all places. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shot down uh, the, the federal mask, airline, and other public transportation mask mandates. Some people, though, were not happy about that, you know? Including the people that didn't want it. I don't be... want it. Yeah. I don't want it. I, I want, want the mask. mask. <laughs> <laughs> Including those that didn't want her to be on the bench at all <laughs> from the outset. That was Sonny Huston, who was one of the uh, dumb rocks that sit on the, the view. <laughs> I mean, that you... show's going away, right? I don't know. Yeah, they I heard it was, it'll be gone by June, I heard. All right. Yeah. Okay. So... Because they can't draw an audience either. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to, the, uh, to her, she, the judge, she was a Trump appointee. Yes. And uh, that, that would be all that would be necessary for them to. Dis be disinclined to have her on the bench is that sure. it came from Trump. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the vaccine of Trump. Uh, yeah, made right. It. Yeah, you know. Jeez. Anyway. And uh, so finally, 
uh, they they've recognized the fact that the air inside a plane, no, no matter how close you are to people, is f cleaner and fresher than most about of the about the safest anywhere. Anywhere, yeah. exactly. <laughs> well, and then and so that's one liberating factor. <laughs> yeah. That was the good news. Yeah. Okay. That was the only good news. All right. right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, people are still not buying the Putin price pop. What They're was not? the? Oh, that was my alliteration. Yeah, yeah. Putin <laughs> price pop. Yeah, that's it. What was the amount now that uh, the inflation is pegged at? Oh well, we're in the low teens somewhere. Yeah, yeah no question. Exactly. About it. The highest in forty years. When you uh, infuse uh, food and energy, anyway. Sure. Yeah. Sh uh, Senator Coons, uh, he's the uh, yeah warmonger from Delaware is supposed to be the closest friend to the president, Brandon, that we have in the Senate. Well, he desperately tries to come off as a very nice politician. Yes. You ever did. notice that? Yeah. His aura uh -huh. tries really hard. You know? Yes. <laughs> I'm just I'm just like Santa Claus. <laughs> I'm here to help. So he floated the idea of putting uh, troops on the ground in Ukraine, which was immediately shot down by most reasonable people. Uh, Saying to the effect that history will be unkind if we do not do this. Oh, yeah. yeah. We don't want to be on the wrong side of history. Of being the policemen of the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because heaven knows we we can afford it. Yeah. In blood and treasure. Sure. Come on. We don't have any debt or <laughs> anything like that you know, to worry about. Oil? Who needs oil? We have windmills. Certainly not Europe. <laughs> They're apparently not going to accept yeah. any more Putin oil. Germany is the last holdout, I think. You and think prices at the pump are high now? Yes. Wait till this goes into effect. <laughs> Putin. Uh, speaking of Putin, he uh, came out and said that the Russian economy is doing quite well. Thank you very much. Uh, inflation is down, and uh, there are. Most people are not experiencing serious hardship. Uh, there may be a time, though, coming up when they have to realign their supply lines to Asia, uh, out of Europe and into Asia that could cause disruptions and shortages. But right now they're doing much better than Europe and America is, as a matter of fact. Well, Fannie Mae has downgraded home sale uh, forecasts for 2022. So our economy will be slowing. Yes. Which People might are, explain the price of gold. Yes, it's it's, it's been popping. It popped to two thousand dollars an ounce, and then it fell right back down to nineteen fifty. So <laughs> it's really not going anywhere. And I think if the uh, measures that we assign to the economic forecast, including home sales, um, in this case, they're saying seven point four percent in twenty twenty two. That means we're slowing. We're going to have a recession. Yes. And that will affect uh, the overall inflation picture. Stagflation again. Stagflation. This right. is 1980 all over again. Yeah. High unemployment, high interest rates, although the interest rates, they're trying to keep them down, but they're raising them slowly. High unemployment, high interest rates, and um, what was the other one? Uh, high inflation, obviously. Yep. So, yep. Elon Musk is back in the news. Boy, this is exciting, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I'm loving Elon. <laughs> what do you think of that line? He's, it's a uh, good line. Yeah, huh? that is. The writer in you. They should have a T-shirt. Yeah, I'm loving Elon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, one commenter said, I don't care who buys Twitter as long as we never lose the spirited but kind, polite, and respectful give and take for which the platform is known. <laughs> Dorsey. <laughs> he's the poster boy of kind. Isn't he, yeah. He? He's come out in support of Musk. He's, he's... Yeah, he really did uh, sort of 180 uh, his offer this week, didn't he? You know, yeah. He was the only one on the board, though, that seems to acquiesce to the to the changes that are coming. Because, you know, Musk is going to get this company. Yes, he is. It's inevitable. Yep. He has, uh, he has pointed out that nobody on the board owns, is, Dorsey owns the most stock at 2.5% of the company of anybody on the board. Most of them own a, a fraction of a percent, you know, a percent. And uh, some of them only go on Twitter once a year to, to, to tweet 
Something, I don't know. Something. Yeah, who knows? Something that we don't hear about, probably. <laughs> I don't have anything new for you on that. We'll, we'll circle back with you directly. I can circle back. I'll circle back with you. You know, her daughters love masks. Oh, uh, Peppermint Patty's daughters? Peppermint Pasaki. Pasaki. Her daughters, uh, according to her, love putting on masks. <laughs> have you ever seen a more inveterate liar than this one? <laughs> no wonder she was at the State Department. And no wonder she's in this administration. Are any of her children cross-dressing yet? Oh. <laughs> It's got to be uh, almost Im immediate because you 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 see how she cr uh, nearly went to tears yesterday describing right. this. You know, <laughs> I don't know if you believe that though. You know, there, she had there, it was a podcast. It was just audio. There was no picture. Uh huh. So I mean, I'm wondering if the sound was down, we could see what she was saying. Would we believe her nearly as much as the audio that came out of it? And you heard what Mika said on, on the uh, morning show. Mm -hmm. She said, uh, Musk, is he's undermining the media. He wants to control what people think. That's our job. How dare him? <laughs> <laughs> That's our job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Max Boot? Max Boot. I mean, you know what? How, uh, you know, I, I have to point out that whenever he can work Max Boot into the narrative, <laughs> Tucker does so. Oh, yeah. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> yes. I mean, Boot comes up at least once a week. Yeah, I know because he call. He's one of the first to call him a Putin stooge or he's, something. He's like that. He's not just a neocon. Yes, but he's also a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Exactly. Very dangerous man. He also happens to be Jewish. Did you? Know and that? he's also Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> for De Max Boot tweeted out: "For democracy to survive, we need more content moderation. Yeah, you not have less. to moderate the conversation." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh, maybe Ezra Pound was right. You know, the famous poet in mm -hmm. the uh, 20th century said that's because democracy is just another word for government run by Jews. And the First Amendment is just a suggestion. Yeah. That, you know, it's a... Well, the whole Bill of Rights for <laughs> yeah. them is a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> it really should be named the, the and, Bill and, of Responsibilities and Penalties. And Madison didn't want it at all. No. Exactly. So... <laughs> It's a good thing we got it through. Yes. Glenn, Mongo only pawn. Yeah, in exactly. In game of light. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Glenn Greenwald was the most serious, and uh, yes. as he usually is, but he said, yes. yesterday was a flagship day in corporate media. It was the day they were forced to explicitly state what has long been clear. They not only favor censorship, but desperately crave and depend on it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, we uh, we haven't seen liberals so enraged since we told them they can't talk about sex with five year olds anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's what got Pisaki all riled up, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I am very willing to let the American public judge my physical and mental fit, yeah, right. my physical as well as my mental fit fitness. And please, no calls. I know her name uh, is has a silent P in it. I just prefer to use the PP. Pisaki. Yeah. Because I don't respect her. Right. Pisaki. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, in Russia, that's a, a synonym for stupid. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Putin you very Pisaki to yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> so Musk has uh, revealed what's really behind the entire blue check liber liberal movement that just how much they hate free speech. Well, you know, to me, it's clear that Musk is uh, setting himself up to play play a much bigger role in the American narrative. Yeah, that's what this is. Yeah, it's much bigger than Twitter. Uh huh. I mean, this is his first step, but I see politics all over this. Yeah. By that, I mean electoral office. For for Elon. Yeah, absolutely. And I would think as soon I'd vote as it, yeah, as soon as it can arrange.